It's your girl Jackie O, the OG original black digital nomad and globe trotting mama. And if this is your first time to my channel, hey girl, hey, hey boy, hey, welcome. I am an OG original black digital nomad and globe trotting mama. My whole channel is devoted to, let's see, uplifting, inspiring, motivating, educating, and most importantly, teaching other black women that they can either travel full time and or move abroad. I have been crisscrossing this globe for the last 25 years, 25 plus years if we're going to keep it real. And I currently slow travel full time with my toddler daughter, Ruth. So yeah, y'all, I'm doing it with the itty bitty. Um, so welcome. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, and even more importantly than liking and subscribing to my little itty bitty channel, is getting out and voting. So if you're abroad, go to your U.S. Embassy. If you are in the United States, make sure you know your polling location. And at this point, don't even try to mail it in. Go and walk your ballot either into the Department of Elections or into your polling center. So do your part. And I got my black as fuck and abroad sports bra on if you guys want to see some of my more of my my clothing line go to my website www.thejackieolife.com and click on shop and shop away it's the holiday times who do you know who loves to travel you you gotta treat yourself first so i got a whole bunch of new subscribers hey y'all hey um and i figured i'd do an about me video and answer questions that y'all been asking me for a while and I haven't actually had a chance to answer. So I'm going to answer as many of those questions that you all slide into my DM and post on my different videos and on all of my social media channels. So I'll post all my social media channels down here. Make sure you follow me on all of them because I try to answer people's questions in various places. On Instagram, I got way close to 12,000 followers. So sometimes it gets a little difficult to respond to everything but i do my best because i love you old squad you guys are amazing so let's get into it guys welcome back i love you guys this is all about me getting to know me maybe i'll do my getting to know baby roof too where y'all can answer questions about my little itty bitty as well but this one's all about jackie oh <laughs> um and you guys are gonna see me looking at paper sometimes looking down at that paper at my phone because i didn't want to miss some questions and i wanted to make sure i got an answer to all the stuff that you want to answer so First question is a little bit about myself, where am I from, all that good stuff. So I am from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, so southwestern Pennsylvania, Allegheny County. Yes, I am a Steelers fan. Go Steelers. 7-0 right now. You heard me. Let's talk about um, Mike Tomlin a little bit. So if you're not a Steelers fan, I'm sorry. <laughs> it just is what it is. Um, and I grew up in the Homewood Russian neighborhood of Pittsburgh. If you don't, guys don't know, it's a predominantly black community, historically black community. It's been that way for a very, very long time. Um, and that's where I was raised. And those are the streets, the, sh the streets of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is what raised me. Um, and although I don't know if I'd ever live in Pittsburgh again, um, I do got to get give Pittsburgh, especially the community I grew up in Pittsburgh, the Homewood Russian community, um, a lot of credit for just supporting me and uplifting me and encouraging me to go out and get it done. And a special shout out to my mama because when I say my mama was a champion for me, she was a champion for me. So that's a little bit about me. Um, let's see. 
uh, some more about my background, like education. So guys, I graduated from high school. My last year of high school, as many of you guys know, I said deuces and I actually went and studied abroad research because there wasn't no Google then. So I actually went to the library and I researched a scholarship so I could study abroad in Germany. So I was in a very small Kudor. So I especially Deutsch. Yeah, ich kann Deutsch. Um, can I speak German? Yes, I can. Um, not as well as I used to, but I can still, I can still get by. I can still do, do a little something, something. Um, so I spent my last year of high school actually in Germany. I studied abroad there, did not speak any German, didn't take German in high school, um, and was dumped into a German high school, a gymnasium, um, which there are different types of high school in Germany, but this is the one like I went to and I just figured it out. And I, I credit some of that, um, for me just having the stamina, the endurance, the fearlessness to now just travel the world full time and do what I want to and work from anywhere in the world that I feel like working at the time that I feel like doing it. Uh, and after I went to high school in Germany and graduated, because I graduated from high school in Germany as well, um, I came back to the United States and went to the ATL. So shout out to all my Southern folks. Um, Freak Nick, I had a good time. I had a good time doing Freak Nick. Um, I went to Spelman College and graduated from Spelman College. Yahoo, Yahoo, my Spelman. I'm also an AKA, so if everybody was wondering, um, I am an AKA. And yes, I am voting for my Soror. Um, my Soror, my former DA, my former Attorney General, um, Kamala Harris for Vice President. Not the biggest fan of Biden, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm gonna do my part and I'm gonna vote for my Soror. Um, and I also went to the University of Pittsburgh School of Law to get my law degree, and I went to the Graduate School of Public Health, as well as the Graduate School of Public Policy and National Affairs at the University of Pittsburgh for master's degree. So, I got a little bit of education, y'all. I do. Um, and I'm very, like, I'm very proud of that, because I, I, you know, I worked my ass off, and, you know, I, I followed the right path, and I did what I wanted to do, but I also will say that growing up, the pathways that were presented to me, that were known to me, was pretty much, all right, if you're going to be smart, if you're going to do well in life, you got to go to law school, you got to go to medical school, right? And one of the things that <laughs> I think are very clear to me is that and my law degree has got me far. Like, I don't practice law anymore, but I will say I'm so thankful for that law degree because it has opened up so many doors and allowed me to have a lot of different um, experiences and jobs that if I didn't have that JD behind my name, I probably wouldn't have had access to. So I am never going to downplay education on the importance of education and the importance of getting like a degree. But I will also say, and I also will say that some of the skills I learned in law school in terms of being a zealous advocate, in terms of knowing your audience, have been lifelong skills that have helped me throughout everything that I've wanted to do, every job that I've had, every challenge that I've gone to. Same with like public health and even like that basic idea of the stages of change. And this is how you get people to do things, right? So you move people from pre-contemplation to contemplation to action, right? Like even that whole concept has just helped me both in my professional world when I was actually head J-O-B, so I was working for people, um, and even as a consultant now, and even as a coach in motivating and getting people to do things. So I'm so thankful for my education. I'm so thankful to have a both a mother who was just so supportive and so all about getting, get your degrees, get your paper, right? But even if y'all don't get all that, Guess what? We live in a new day and age now, so I encourage you to continue to learn to love and to learn, and that doesn't necessarily have to happen in college or in graduate school, although if that's something for you, but just you on YouTube right now, you learn it from somebody. You can always learn from people, and I encourage you to always do that, especially, especially if you want to move abroad because your mind has to constantly be evolving and just learning how to adapt to new and different and sometimes very difficult situations, okay? 
So, what else can I tell you guys about myself? Um, I only took the bar once. I passed it on my first go round. Um, most people sometimes it takes them a couple times to pass the bar exam, but I took the both the Pennsylvania and the New Jersey bar, and I sat for both bars at once, which means that I did two days in Pennsylvania, and then I drove to Jersey and finished my final day of writing um, for the bar exam, and I passed both of them first go round. So let me see what else. Um, what have I learned through traveling? Y'all got all night or all day? Because <laughs> I've learned so much. But most importantly, I've learned to like be myself, to be open, to listen to people, um, to speak my mind, to stand my ground, um, to be curious, uh, to have a healthy sense of like skepticism and wonder. And I say that because like I've been in, in 25 years of crisscrossing the globe, I've been in some strange situations with some people that I never would have thought I had anything in common with or, or anything. And yet I've had fabulous connections, very interesting conversations, amazing food that I probably would have never touched if I was just sitting here and, uh, and, and sitting in the United States just chilling like that it wouldn't even cross my mind to even try something like that so and it's all because I've been I've just been well and I've been open and I have if there's a door that opens for me for the most part if it feels right I walk right through it and I walk through it in confidence and I walk through it secure even if I don't like it um I learn something from it and I for me that's been the greatest gift of living abroad, of traveling full time, and that is the one thing that if nothing else, my little, my little bitty, my little baby Ruth, um, gets out of this, it will be that I want her to just never lose that sense of wonderment, never not be curious, never want to learn, never want to meet and connect with new and different people, and never want to continue to grow and evolve and learn and study. If you guys are on my Facebook page, you see that over the last couple of weeks I've been doing like plumbing. No, I ain't no plumber, but <laughs> a life of thought has taught me that there's basically nothing I can't teach myself, and that there's nothing that if I don't outreach to people and ask people questions, I can't learn. So, Hell yeah, I'm tackling plumbing, and hell yeah, I'm getting it done, because black girls rock, we can do any fucking thing we want to. So, if you leave me on that note, just know that, okay? Um, let's see, what up? Or, when did I first get my passport? So, I can't tell you when I first got my passport. It was probably before I was two years old. I've always had two passports, so, as many of you guys know, my mom is American, my dad is Nigerian, so I have a U.S. passport and I have a Nigerian passport. So I have a blue passport, <laughs> which right now ain't worth much, <laughs> and I have a green passport, which never was worth much. But um, it can help me in ECOWAS, which is the the countries of Western Africa, because um, they have various treaties that allows me to go there visa free, which I can't do on my U.S. passport. So. Um, and I had, I had both of those passwords before I was like two or three and my mom, cause she keeps everything, has my little old itty bitty passports. Uh, so I've had them since I was at least one or two years old. Um, and there was never a time in my life where international travel or being cosmopolitan or knowing about the world was not encouraged. And that's actually something I hear a lot from the women that I interview and black women doing the most. Even if they didn't travel in their younger days and have the same, you know, some of the opportunities that I did, most of them had someone in their life who encouraged them to see beyond, like, their block, to see beyond, like, their community and really just think, you know, what else can you do? Where else can you go? And I am always, like, crystal clear with everybody. Like, living abroad, traveling full-time ain't for everybody. Like, I see so many people online thinking, like, oh, I'm just going to go and it's going to be spring break 365. And like, for the most part, living abroad ain't like that. Like it's still, you still got everyday worries and woes, etc. Now you don't have some of the stresses that you do. Like for, if you guys saw my article on Travel Noir, which I will also link to below, I lived in Guatemala 
on less than a thousand dollars a month so i'm not stressing money like i am in the united states i'm not necessarily stressing personal safety although i won't say when i lived in america i was always looking over my shoulder but like the reality is that life in america can be very unsafe for black women um black people in general but black women in particular and i feel like the dangers that face black women aren't even really discussed as much as they are those that like face black black men um but we are so susceptible to so much violence and trauma in the United States that I just never feel like or part of my reality or even something that kind of might even happen in, um, when I'm traveling around the world. No, that does not mean that bad things don't happen. Like, I'm not going to say that because things can happen anywhere. And I always got to have my street smarts, particularly now that I'm traveling like a baby. I can't be stupid. I can't even do some of, some of the less wise things that I did when I was traveling solo, right? Because, like, I got a two-year-old girl who was 100% dependent on me. So it just has completely changed, you know, my attitude even about traveling, how I travel, how much traveling I'll do in one day. Like... Back in the day, even like three years ago, I'm like being three countries in one day, hopping plane to plane, um, business meetings, etc. Like I'm not gonna do that to Ruth. I'm like, I'm like, she's a trooper and she can hang in there with the best of them, but like that just isn't fair for her little two year old body, right? So, um, slow travel is just the way to go for us. Uh, we have one point where we're based and we will just explore a region, and that tends to work for us. And the thing that I'm also doing now, because I see that's another question that somebody asked me um, of how my traveling has changed over the years is I have an itty bitty, so I have a two year old, but I also have a mother who is getting up there in age. And so for me as well, it's very important that I come back to the U.S. a lot more regularly than what I used to do in the past. And it's also important that I always, always make sure that I can get a direct flight back to the U.S. relatively quickly. Um, and even during like uh, COVID-19, as most of you guys know, I've come back to the United States because one of the things that I take super duper seriously is voting. And I'm going to make sure <laughs> my vote gets counted. I'm going to go to the polls on election day and I am going to vote. And I'm going to keep it real. Um, I'm going to vote at least for president for the, for the Democratic Party. We'll see for some of the lower um, down ballot candidates. Um, I might do some third party. We'll just, we'll see. Like, right? Like, you got to study. Study, research. Like, don't just go into that polling booth and be like, I don't know who this person running for DA is. Like, make sure they are representing your best interests because that's all I'm about. Change, like, ain't a spectator sport. Change is about being involved and being active right and you can still do that when you overseas right like you can still there's democrats abroad there's republicans abroad there's independents abroad these are different groups you can still donate the causes you want to want to donate to you can still be very aware of what ballot measures are being proposed you can still very much write letters to whoever your congressperson is whoever your city council people are wherever you were originally based now I initially, I lived in California for a while, so I lived in, like, the Mission District. Hey, Mission folks, if you're a, if you're a San Francisco person. Um, and I also, uh, I was born and raised in, like, Pittsburgh, PA. So, but my political um, knowledge, for the most part, is, is those two regions, which are vastly different, right? We're talking about, at one point, like, having Nancy Pelosi, you know, as, as, as your congressperson. You talk about... Uh, um, southwestern Pennsylvania, which is part of like the blue wall, which sometimes is blue, sometimes it's red. Although Allegheny County, where I where I was born, um, for the most part, uh, just because of its union roots and all that all that good stuff, is for the most part uh, Democratic. Although hmm, um, people can get iffy. So uh, let's see. So, but but getting back to because I lost my train of thought for a minute, but it happens, yeah. Um, now that my mom's a little bit older, it's, and also that I have a daughter, I want her, and I've said this in other videos, I want my daughter and my mother to have a very strong relationship, and I would absolutely love if my mom would travel with me, 
But you know what? Like, that ain't her path. Um, she did some traveling when she was younger. And, my, like, when I say she did some traveling, my mama, before I was born, my mama was in Russia. She was in the UK. Like, my mama's done some traveling. But that ain't where she is right now in her life. And that's okay. Again, um, I travel full time because it's something that I love to do. It's the way I want to raise my daughter. I'm a very big proponent of world schooling. And maybe one day I'll do a video just on, like, world schooling. And yes, my daughter is too. But, <laughs> from, from zero to like seven is when you learn so much, right? You're building up all your vocabulary, everything. I mean, it's amazing how she's learned and grown in the last two years. So yes, she is being educated now, right? Like most education, I'd say 95% of it doesn't take place in a classroom. Um, and that's my general philosophy on education just in general anyway i would love to hear you guys especially you parents or people thinking about being parents um what are your ideas and thoughts about how you'd like to educate your your child uh people in fact that goes into the next question where people are asking me, what am i going to do for school for ruth well right now probably for these first seven years it probably will be a world schooling so we'll be traveling around the world um learning that way picking up languages learning all the basics abcs and multiple languages you know count multiplication although do you learn multiplication at seven i don't know but ruth can do it um because there's nothing she can't do and a mix of like forest school where it's available in countries that we're in so if you don't know what forest school is forest school Oh, excuse me. It's something that I practice regularly now at Ruth, which is we are outside probably about four to six hours a day because I just believe in kids being outside, being in nature, getting dirty, getting in muddy puddles. She's a big Peppa Pig fan right now. So if there's water and there's a puddle, Ruth is in her boots, in it, jumping away. And <coughs> I'm encouraging that because... I think it's just so important that she learn to appreciate um, nature and earth and being connected to the earth and being grounded and all those different things. And there's so much to learn from even, you know, earth, land, fire, all those different things, all the different like elements. There's, there's so much learning that happens in there. And there's so many, um, you know, there's science, there's math, there's geometry. Um, there's all of that stuff. We're learning colors, you know. So it's really cool to just see her learn and to see me relearn some of these things because, you know, some stuff you learn as an itty bitty and you're like, when did I use that again in life? Because um, you've built onto it so much. So that's a lot of fun. So we'll see after that. I, 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 I do also believe in conscious parenting. So I, I don't hit Ruth. I would never hit Ruth. I don't. I absolutely do not believe in hitting children. Um, but I also believe in having conversations with Ruth. So we'll see where Ruth wants to, wants to be in a couple years. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to having conversations about, Hey Ruth, where are we going to live next? What are you interested in exploring? Um, what are your passions? Because I think a lot of our, our, our travel will be dictated by what some of Ruth's interests are. Um, again, going back to the fact that as long as my mom is, I'm blessed to have a mom on this earth, we will always be coming back to Pittsburgh a lot. Um, just so that Ruth can spend as much time with my mom as possible and I can also just check up on her. So I think that's probably the biggest change to how I've traveled over the years is that um, I'm, I feel like I hope my mom thinks I am. I'm becoming a better daughter in the sense of I actually really want to hang out with my mama and I want to spend time with her. And so I make a conscious effort to do that, even if it means coming back to the United States for extended periods of time. Um, and that goes to the next question. People are always asking me, do I have a permanent home? So no, I don't have a permanent home. Uh, this summer I actually shut down my place in, um, California in Northern California in Palo Alto. I had been, uh, subleasing it out, fully furnished, um, which was wonderful. It was a way to like generate money, etc. but it just, it was it's a lot of work having tenants, guys. And some of you guys know I'm, I'm, I'm planning on getting uh, an apartment building, buying an apartment building uh, soon too, probably one or two. Shh, keep that under wraps. Um, but I just didn't want to do it fully furnished anymore because, yeah. Um, so most of my stuff I either sold or I had shipped back to my mom's house. Now I have, if you guys do not know, I have a very extensive 
African art collection. Um, I just absolutely love African art, both contemporary and traditional sculptures, all that good stuff. And I have a huge book collection and I'm a big fan of Ankara and African prints. I'm just prints in, in general. I lived in Indonesia, so I love the whole batik, the Dutch wax, um, which the, through the Dutch East Indian Company came to West Africa and the continent of Africa uh, just in general. And so I'm actually fairly knowledgeable of all that stuff. So if you guys want me to do a video on and just show you some of my clothes, my collection, um, I'm happy to do that. But because I travel full time, obviously all that stuff can't go with me. So I'm lucky enough that I got a mom with my huge house. Uh, and she lets me store a lot of that stuff there. Now, my end game is that at some point, I will buy a beach home somewhere, um, even if we are still traveling for most of the year, and I will house and store my stuff there. But I don't know where that place is. I don't know where it is in the world. So if you guys got some suggestions, uh, let me know. Uh, I know right now, top, top of the list is probably Kenya, um, the Kenyan coast. Uh, but I'm open-minded, and I will consider any place you guys let me know again i ain't slowing down my full-time travel anytime soon i absolutely love my lifestyle uh i love what i'm doing uh just want a beach house that i could probably like run out and, and and store a little bit of my african art um and some of my ankara collection so that is i hope i answered you guys' questions i feel like i'm talking kind of fast i'm going to run out of stuff here but I hope it's like useful and um, just to get to know me because I feel like we sit here and you chat and you watch me every Sunday chatting to you about whatever. And it's like, well, who is she? Who is she? So now you get, <laughs> Which, uh, why do I crack myself up? Um, so now you're, you're getting just to learn a little bit about me, what I stand for, et cetera, et cetera. Now I'm going to answer a few more questions then I'm going to go because... Guys, I could sit here and chat for hours, but I don't know if you can sit and listen. So if you want me to do another About Me video, I'm happy to do so. If you want me to do some tours and kind of show you my life, what's going on, all that good stuff, I I'm happy to do that too. Just post in the comment box, like, what do you guys want me to see? What do you guys want me to chat about, et cetera, et cetera. So I got some questions about my coaching, like, what do I do? So I have a couple different coaching options one is i teach a course and i teach a six-week course it is live so it's not one of those pre-recorded self-paced courses that everybody's doing it's you me and 14 other black women on zoom twice a week not once a week guys it's twice a week so it's like a course like a college course um, where we go over both the nuts and bolts of moving abroad, but we also get into like the nitty gritty and like the nuances that most people, what, what I see in all these Facebook groups and black Sid discussions don't really get into. We talk about like colorism. We talk about like the history of different regions of the world. We talk about moving abroad in a way that is anti-colonialist, that is that is supporting and empowering and enriching um, and celebrates indigenous people and their cultures, that celebrates communities of color, that um, doesn't have some of the ugly Americanness that I see happening even in a lot of the Blacksit groups. And I'm real, like, guys, I keep it real honest about that. Like, I think there are a lot of people who are, are leaving the United States to improve their lives, to escape racism, to escape misogynism to misogynism guys i can't even talk tonight um misogyny to escape whatever um but then end up going into countries and like treat them like trash and those aren't the type of clients i attract those aren't the type of clients i want like i want people who are truly committed to making this world a better place not just their own selves a better place and so that's some of the nitty-gritty we get into in my courses and then I have my one-on-one -on -one coaching where I work one-on-one -on -one with, with women, again, black women, although that I kind of open up to some other women of color, um, an LGBTQ woman, um, not LGBTQ women, but actually if you're a member of the LGBTQ community, um, so you can be non-binary, I just don't 
necessarily do people who identify as men. Um, where we also do just one-on-one, -on -one, and that I do a lot of business consulting. So if you are um, concerned about finances and how you're going to make money, then we just get in and we just really start working with how to build up multiple revenue streams. Because to me, guys, that's it. Like, if in 2020, 2021, you cannot be relying on one income stream. Like, you just can't be. You got to have at least five to seven. I recommend for all my clients, for all my students, that before you leave the United States, you at least have three. Um, and they don't have to be large amounts because, again, uh, your cost of living when you move abroad, typically, depending on where you go, um, it won't be as high as they are in the United States, depending on what bills you still want to pay <laughs> that are back in the United States. Um, and so we just talk about all that and we just start to get you comfortable with money, with handling money, with having discussions about money, um, and just lose some of that fear because, like, you got to make money work for you. And whether you're making $500 a month, $1,500 a month, or $15,000 a month, um, if your expenses exceed what you're bringing in, then you're struggling. Point blank, you're struggling. So there are people making $1,500 a month who are living quite comfortably in many spots in the world. And I can tell you guys some of them spots and some of them video and some future videos if you want. Um, and there are people who are in San Francisco and New York making $15,000 a month and ain't living so well. So do not be intimidated by the amount of money you make. Know that you just got to make your money work for you. Okay? So... I hope I answered a lot of questions you guys had about me. I hope this video was useful and helpful to you. You guys know that it is, I feel like, so privileged each week to be able to make videos that hopefully are very helpful and inspiring and educational to you. So please leave me as many comments as you can. Again, like and subscribe. Most importantly, go vote this week vote like your life depended on it because it does voting has consequences right and even if you aren't that excited about either candidate there's one donald trump who's batshit crazy uh so i'm not gonna get on that <laughs> that bandwagon right now uh but I've, <laughs> if you don't know i'm pretty far to the left um in terms of my my politics but I love you guys. I am wishing nothing but the best for you guys, as I say each and every week and weeks so that I don't forget. I'm thinking it in my mind. You are magical and your life should be too. So if you ain't thriving, sis, you ain't living right. So what are you going to do this week to make sure you thrive? Let me know in the comment box. And do not forget, if y'all don't like and subscribe, <laughs> I'm going to be judging you. All right, much love, be blessed, and I can't wait to see you again next week. And don't forget, come join me on IG, come join me on Facebook. Like, let's connect, sis, let's connect. Bye-bye, I'm out. Hey, black girl, hey, you good? Because I'm fabulous. I'm a digital nomad, and my lifestyle allows my daughter and I to experience new places, culture, foods, and people. Living abroad and or traveling full-time is amazing. It is freedom. I can work from anywhere. I want more black women to experience the same sort of freedom. I help black women manifest their dreams of a life abroad or a full-time travel. Are you ready for a life beyond your wildest dreams?